Hello, 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 hello. I am so excited to be here tonight. It is TGI Friday, and I hope everybody's having an awesome, well, starting their weekend, and they've got some good plans going on. Um, I'm here in Florida. It's crazy hot, 106 index in the heat, but um, nobody would be thinking about candles at this time of the year, but I'm actually going to show you how to make uh, some really cool candles out of a terracotta pot that is good for gift giving as we start getting into the cooler weather. There's a lot to learn with this one. So let's go ahead and get started and uh, we'll rock it up. Okie dokie. You like my little intro? Isn't that so cute? Um, let me go ahead and get my comments pulled up here. And then if anybody comes on, they can actually say hi. Oh, hey there. We got Mary. It looks like Mary's on. Hey. Um, I am, like I said, I am streaming from StreamYard. And if anybody uh, can go to the Painted Soul Creative Journey, which is the actual group that I am doing this live stream, the main group I'm doing this live stream, and I'm almost live streaming into my Facebook and also into my Facebook Crafting with Kim, which you can see on my little tag below there. Da, da, da. They're there, Crafting with Kim. And that's my Facebook page. And I'm also on my YouTube Crafting with Kim. So, um, but for tonight, I am actually, uh, this is my debut on Painted Soul Creative Journey group. And I'm so happy they invited me to join in. So like I said, we got a lot to do and I'm not going to dabble too much because I want to get into it because there is quite a few steps in this little teeny <laughs> terracotta pot. I believe there's quite a few go a few things going on. All right. Um, so as we start here, like I said, candles, you can see I've got two of them that I've made here. This one I've been burning and kind of burning it down. It's new candles, so it hasn't burned all the way to the edge there. But um, I am going to do, now I hope my lighting is good. On my, I'm using my laptop to look, and it might not be the best, but um, this has actually got a, a relief pattern, which I'm going to be showing you the relief pattern. And I've got it um, in a distressed uh, two-cone, like a distressed look, painted look too. Now, there's two different colors I've got going on here for the distress look. This one here is actually a copper base with a like an aqua or what you would call patina, which basically is this guy here. I'll show you the colors in a minute. But for tonight, since I've got two of these and I've actually got this one here, which I really like too, that's more of like, I know I've got the candle burning, but um, it's like a pewter or gray kind of tone and with the distressed little guy on there as well. Um, but for tonight, what I'm going to do is because I want to do something a little different with my colors. I'm actually going to be using this color as my my distress color, and I'll use my base color as my dark uh, umber, which I'm going to show you in a second. However, if anybody wants to do it in with this kind of like patina finish, what you would do basically is you're going to follow the same steps that I would be teaching you for the other colors, but you would use a base of metallic. You just, I'm just using a, um, what do you call it? Acrylic based metallic. I don't really care what brand it is, honestly. And since this is a uh, terracotta pot, you can see this is just a base, you know, clay pot and it's already got a brown tone. You don't necessarily do an undercoat. Like if it was white, you should probably put a dark, undertow like a brown on there and then put this on top but with this one you can just do a copper color and then let that dry and then go over with your um with your um your aqua or some sort of like uh teal like you want it to be on a little light tone like this all right okay so i got that one and uh like i said with the other one i use these are <laughs> forgive me you can see this has been used quite a bit um, yeah, so anyway, this is the Waverly, what do you call these, chalk paints, but um, you can use regular acrylics for this as well. I just happen to like these colors of the chalk paint, that's why I'm using them, and they're real, got a real matte finish to them. So anyway, I'm going to, that's what I used for this when I made this one. Like I said, it's, it's more of a kind of a pewter, I forget what this is, mineral, this is called mineral. Um, but like I said, I'm going to go ahead and use like this, this cream, yellowy cream color that I've got here 
which is also a Waverly paint just because they have something different. So I might have three of the same thing. Okay, so like I said, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be teaching you not only now, here's the thing learning the reason I wanted to do so many steps with this is because you can use these steps when you do other projects too. It doesn't have to be just on these pots or just on these candles, especially the relief thing is something that I, I like to do. And I used to do, I used to have a business as a, um, a mural artist and a decorative artist. And sometimes I would actually do full wall reliefs, plaster reliefs and things on the wall. So this is a small version, just expand it to a large version if you want to. Okay. So anyway, the first step with this is actually to put on our relief. OK, and <clears throat> for the sake of me just being cheaper, not wanting to go out and do anything different, um, I'm just going to use this little guy here. It's the only one that I found that would be suitable for uh, the size of the pot. Of course, once again, you guys can do bigger pots if you want. Uh, you just have to have more wax. That's pretty much all you'd have to have, you know, and do a bigger stencil. Um, I did. But this, too, by the way, these are sticky back stencils. I'm going to go ahead and put this one on here. You can see it just peels right off. These are like good for if you're doing a round surface. Um, and they're real thin too. That's another reason I like them. And, and actually I do paint, glass painting sometimes. So I like them for that reason as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and place this on here, you know, fairly straight. It's a bird, so it doesn't have to be exact. And press that down on there real good. Okay. So I've got my stencil on there. So that's the first thing we're going to do is put our stencil and do our, um, our relief pattern. All right. Now I'm going to show you too. you know, here's just some little guys like if you have stencils like this and you want to use these, I keep forgetting. I got two screens going on, by the way. Um, hey, girlfriend. Hey, um, let's see who we go. Stephanie. Hey, darling. Glad you're on here. Hope you're doing OK with your week. I know things have been a little funky for you, but hope things are better. Um, so, yeah. And I remember if it let me know how my audio is, if you can hear my music, because I've got some stream beat music going on in the background and um, I've got two screens going through StreamYard. So I've got a lot of techie stuff going on. Um, and if there's any issues with my sound or anything, you guys, please pipe in and let me know so I can try to adjust stuff. But OK, what I was saying is if you're using a stencil like this and you're trying to do it on a round surface, um, you can actually do that, especially on a small thing like this. But number one, you need to cut around your area. I was considering using this one here um, because it would give a little extra design. And it's kind of cute, but I didn't really want to cut my stencils out yet. But you need to cut this out and you would need to make sure that you tape it all the way around really good so that it holds down nice and flat because when we're going to put the mud on here to do the relief, you need to make sure that it's not going to seep underneath, kind of like what you do with a paint, but it's going to be a, um, a, uh, a mud version instead. All right. So, but that's a little tip. If you didn't have one that was a thin sticky like this, you could use one of these and just cut it and tape it on super good. All right. So now here we go. So how do we get this to look like relief? Maybe you guys already figured this out. What we're going to do is um, you can use either plaster of Paris. I've got my big jug here. Got you guys, you plaster of Paris. It comes in all sorts of different things. You can find it at Walmart even or your craft stores. Um, or you can use it already pre-mixed like joint compound. You can find that little tubes too, like in your painting section in your hardware stores. They have joint compound. I'm good, girl. Thanks for asking. Happy to be here, y'all, and see you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm telling you, I've been out of the loop for the last couple of weeks. I have another live painting group that I started a couple of weeks ago, and I love those girls. And I've been having to do some work, the four little word work, that's got me on some crazy schedules. So I won't be back until another week of that, and then I'll kind of be back on track with my lives and getting in with the other groups and stuff. But I miss everybody. I'm trying to catch everything as much as I can. Um, and like I said, if you're coming on and you are new to this and you're on Facebook and you're seeing me, uh, please, there is a link that I posted on the Paint and Soul Creative Journey site. If you saw it, it allows StreamYard, um, if, you're, if you haven't hooked up with StreamYard yet, it allows me to be able to see your comments through StreamYard because Facebook's got this new thing where they're trying to have too much power and control. They won't let StreamYard in unless you actually give them permission to do it. So there's a link in the um, in the post I put on there right before I came on. Hopefully you'll see that and you can sign up with that. 
Okay, so back to this. Okay, so what we got to do here is uh, if anybody out there tell me, have you ever messed with Plaster of Paris? If it's joint compound, you have a little bit of leadway on your drying time, but Plaster of Paris dries pretty quick and especially the way I'm going to be doing it because you have to make a thick paste. Most of the time we use Plaster of Paris, you mix it and it's kind of watery and you pour it into something. And eventually, hint, hint, I'm going to be doing some teaching with that because I love mixing with mud and clay and all that sort of thing. Um, but for this little guy, all I did was put a little bit in here. And it's basically uh, when you do this, it's kind of a two to one mixture. It's more of the um, mud. It's not mud. It's kind of dry right now. Your chalk or whatever you want to call it. It's more of the dry mix. Uh, to water so it needs a little bit of water if you put too much water in there it's going to get soupy and it's not going to be good but I got another tip what I'm going to be doing with this to give it a little bit of um, stickability so to speak and a little bit more durability ta-ta I'm going to add a little bit of the white glue in here and a little bit of water and we're going to mix it together and like I said I have to work fairly quick with this because what we're going to be doing is when I mix this up I'm going to be taking one of my big craft sticks here. If you have a putty knife, like a little putty knife, you can use that too. But this is a very small surface, and I found that I can use it with this little guy here with just my little, the little small ones, um, the little small like popsicle sticks probably will work well, but this has got a fatter surface, and you can just kind of smear on real nice. So as I'm working, I'm going to be, like I said, putting this on here, and I'll be applying it, and then you'll see how that process works. So let me go ahead and do that i've got my water standing by the reason i gotta make sure is because i know how fast this stuff sets up and if it sets up you can always add a little extra water but i'm hoping not to ruin the batch because i don't want to have to make a new batch and uh, like i said if you've ever played with mud has anybody out there ever messed with what well, i call it all mud whether it's clay or joint compound or concrete all right, I'm just, I'm not really putting an equivalent in here. I'm just kind of squirting a little bit of the white glue in there, sort of like that to just, like I said, it's going to give it a little extra stickability there. Stickability. <laughs> it is a good one, isn't it? Yeah, I, I think that's a made up word. I, 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 uh, I coined that one. All right, so like I said, I got my thing standing by. Where's my spoon? In case I need a little extra bump bump, because sometimes this stuff can get too watery. You can see here, I'm adding just a little bit of water. I'll probably end up adding too much, but it doesn't take much to get this. But you want the consistent be to sort of like, um, sort of like a toothpaste in a way, you know, like a thick paste, paste, paste. And you'll get to kind of thinking like, oh, da, 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 da. I'm sitting here mixing this up and I've got time. But when you start adding in your, um, your water and then you start stirring it around, of course, you want to try to get as many of your lumps out. It, it works pretty fast. But I see here that I'm still a little wet. See how it's drippy? Can you see if it's dripping like that? That's that's too wet. So I'm going to add a little bit at a time and just get it to where I can get it that thick paste effect. And you, the reason you want it to be nice and thick is because you don't want it running all over your uh, stencil when you put it on there. You want it to be able to have control on it. A little bit more. You'll get to that point where all of a sudden it'll be like, boom, you got too much. And um, you got to, like, get that sucker on before it starts sitting up on you. So, like I said, has anybody else ever worked with plaster? Ever done, like, plaster casting or the little handprints or you do with the babies and, and all that kind of stuff? Those are, those are fun. I used to do uh, full-on body casting with silicones and, and plaster and things like that. And uh, I really loved it, but <clears throat> it's a pretty laborious um, art form so I you know and I had all these body parts hanging around my studio and um, anyway I kind of switched gears on that I did have some success with that I sold a few of them because they were really cool okay now we're starting to take shape it's getting a little bit thicker all right you guys can kind of see it's still a little bit too runny for me though I mean I want it to be like set up set up set up set up almost well I guess it's more than two Tooth between toothpaste and let me like, you know, frosting on a cake, like real kind of thick. There we go. We're getting it now. I can tell now. And it's starting to dry. Once you get it mixed and it starts hardening up, then you got that little small window to kind of work with it before it'll start setting up on you. 
but I think I've got it now. I think I've got it thick enough now. You kind of see that? Okay, it's not really dripping or running on me too bad. So I'm, I'm good with that. Put this water away so I don't spill it because I'm a little bit on the klutzy side. And let me get this out of the way here too. So I don't get up in my way. I have got so much going on in my little tiny space. I even got a microwave sitting over here next to me. So I can do the, um, when we do the, um, what you call it part? The wax. Hello, wax. All right. So, okay. I'm going to go ahead and smear this on, guys. <clears throat> if, you, if you're if you kind of messy, I would also recommend that you maybe take some blue tape and tape off all around here. You can wipe this off when it dries, and it does dry fairly quickly, and it just has like a white chalky effect, and you're going to paint over that anyway. But in order to, um, you know, keep it really nice and clean, if you want to be pretty neat, you could tape around the whole thing, uh, especially if you're just playing with it for the first time. All right, here I go. I'm going to go ahead and just take a blop of it like this. And make sure that you guys can see this in the camera, too. Da, da, da. And I'm just kind of putting it on there. It's kind of like putting a little icing on a cake sort of thing. Now, it's going to look a little, um, you know, a little rough. But what you want to try, you can sort of eyeball it and see, you know, you want to cover the whole stencil area. See, I've got it all covered like that. But you can kind of, you can, you can really, oops, I made a little blip there, tell the thickness of it like it thick or thin in certain areas you can kind of look at that and eyeball that until enough now also try to do your best to sort of smooth it out like that okay i'm gonna put a little bit more over here but it, you, it's not going to be totally smooth you'll drive yourself crazy trying to get it really smooth you can always do that at the end when it dries because you can put a little um sandpaper on it when it dries and that's a little bit funky and i actually like a little bit of texture on it anyway i'm just trying to make sure that i've got it uh, thick enough in all the areas so when I pull the stencil off it'll look fairly consistent but even if it doesn't it still looks okay trust me all right so there we go I'm gonna leave this off to the side now interestingly enough this is totally fine the way it is you don't have to clean this out right away because when it dries it'll just crumble right out you can just shake it right out I mean like break it up and shake it out and then it's water-based so you can just you know clean clean your little guy but I would suggest you can see I've got this little small glass dish these little ramkins up from the Dollar Tree and those work great for this because they're very small something small like that, that you can get into easy all right so I'm gonna put that out of my way now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off I don't want to wait until it's totally dry because it'll crumble on me you want to do it while it's wet Okay, somebody else is on there. I got two people so far. That's it. Okay, truth, love and all diversity and all things amazing artists. Yes, darling, absolutely. Okay, here we go. Ta -da -da, the big reveal. I'm going to pull this off, and if everything goes well, I've got a cute little relief stencil there. <gasps> Look at there. Okay, now you can actually see in some of my areas, it's a little bit lighter here. Okay, I missed a little spot on his tail. And I missed a couple spots like on the beak and whatnot. But honestly, I'm not that worried about it because it's still got a little texture and it'll still look fine when you get it painted up. All right. So that's basically all you do. That's pretty darn easy, isn't it? <laughs> but you can do that with a larger image as well. You know, everything. Same thing with this stencil. I'm not going to clean it right now. I'm just going to put it back on this paper and let it dry. And it'll just crumble right off when it's dry. Okay. Put that up out of my way. But see, ta-da, wasn't that easy? That's how you do a relief. Yeah, it is easy. It really is. It's just a matter, like I said, of mixing your mud correctly. And uh, I got my little emblem in the way there. Um, mixing your mud correctly. And um, so it's nice and thick. Like I said, if you get the joint compound, it's already pre-mixed for you. And it takes longer to dry, which is kind of cool. But if you're in a hurry and you want to do Plaster Paris because it dries quicker, it dries probably in about 20 minutes or so. However, I've got another one set aside here that I already did. So we're not going to have to wait for this one to dry. Uh, but you can see basically what it is. You can even do your own stencils, large stencils, and do a big relief on a wall or on a piece of wood or canvas or whatever you want to do. And that's how you do it. Yep. Okay, great. So we're going to set this one up on there and let that let me dry. And I'll do that one later. Like I said, I kind of felt bad because I didn't have too many variety of stencils to use. I got the one little bird. But, you know, like I said, I was like, okay, well, actually, I did do a butterfly on this one. I had a little butterfly that was on a stiff um, stencil that I did the first tip I was telling you about taping it down and I wanted to test it it's a little crooked but once again it's kind of flying so I'm gonna go use this one because it's dry but I did take a little bit of very very fine uh, 
grit sandpaper and I lightly sanded this and it is a little bit of a smoother surface on there. So once your, um, your reliefs do dry, just lightly sand it and, um, and take some of the little burrs off, you know, so when you start painting, it'll, it'd be nice and clean. Okay. So now that was step one. Step two is we got to paint it. All right. You're going to paint the whole thing. So like I said, normally, the other colors that I told you about, you can use if you want to. But generally, when you're uh, doing like a distressed version, it starts with a darker base coat, generally a, um, a brown or dark gray or even black sometimes. And then you put your lighter tones on top. Has anybody ever done distressed like furniture or um, especially furniture? A lot of people do the distressed furniture these days. Um, I used to do that too, or, you know, just to stress down wood or anything like that. Of course, we know we paint it down sometimes when we want the little wood effects on our canvas, but here is another way to do it. And you know what? I got to get my, let me go over here and I got to grab my water because I didn't grab any water for my brush. Here we go. All right. That didn't take too long. Okay. So I'm taking this burnt umber, this real dark brown. Here we go. And I am going to, I need more than that, Kim. What am I thinking of? I'm basically just going to paint over the entire pot with one color. Here's my little way that I paint these two. Yeah, I love distressing furniture too. I used to, like I said, I used to do a lot of that back in my day. All right, so here's the way I hold my pots. I put my fingers in there like that. And by the way, you know, you don't have to do this whole distressing look. If you want to just do the candle part, you could paint your pot any old way. I've got lots of really colorful pots. Anybody that knows me, most of my stuff is very whimsical and very bright and colorful and patterns and whatnot. But this is the whole flip side of me, too, where I kind of like that earthy, you know, kind of worn look as well. So I do a little bit of everything. I like a little bit of the farmhouse look and stuff, too. So I'm a little bit of a mixed bag of nuts, if you want to know the truth. Okay, so like I said, I'm just going to paint the whole darn thing with one color. And you want to make sure that you're getting in there and getting all your edges of your um, of your relief. Now, bear in mind that this is still, you know, even though it's dried, it still can react to water. So if you're sitting there rubbing, rubbing, rubbing on this thing, eventually you're going to activate that um, mud in there and it's going to uh, come off. So you just kind of want to sort of like do a stipple or a light dab effect on there to get in between those. Don't rub it too hard is basically what I'm trying to say. Okay. And of course you can use a bit bigger brush if you want. I just grabbed this little one inch. This is a little one inch chip brush. Uh, like I said, if you want to go a little bit faster, you could get a two inch or whatever and just, but I'm just kind of doing a, a base coat on this and anybody that's ever painted these pots, you know, this stuff like sucks up, <laughs> really really fast so this thing will dry in a snap all right so i guess everybody's out and about tonight i usually don't do a friday night but because like i said earlier my crazy schedule i uh this is like my only time slot i had to do anything so i'm going to be spending some time with my grandkids and my family tomorrow and then i got church and homeless shelter stuff on sunday and then i gotta go back to work so whew, i'm literally burning the candle at both ends you know no pun intended <laughs> All right, ladies. Well, I appreciate you hanging out there with me. And of course, if you've got any questions, pop up. I'll be happy to share my questions or answers if I got them. Oh, if I get a an opportunity, I've got a lot to talk about because this is a lot going on with this pot. But anybody that actually joins in on my lives, what I normally do um, is, you know, for conversation's sake and a little extra interest, I've come up with this thing called artifacts. It's like artifacts, artifacts, where whatever subject that I'm working on, and tonight would be candles. Um, it could have been terracotta pots, or it could have been reliefing or whatever, but I chose candles, primarily because we're doing, I look up facts about them, and then um, I can tell you a little bit about it, because I learn some stuff too when I do that, and I think it's kind of like a double duty. You get to learn a few things um, while you're getting to learn how to do something really fun and creative. So, I do have some artifacts about candles and a couple things I learned about candles. The first one I learned about candles, uh, I like to see if anybody wants to reply and respond. Does anybody out there know what a candle maker is called or used to be called? I guess they're not called that much some more anymore, but they originally were called what? Anybody have an idea? 
how long does it take to make the candle and how do you make the wax? Hey, Robert, Robert's my honey bunny. He's hopping on. He always hops on and helps me out and gives me some love and, and helps me get through this. Uh, the candle itself, well, as you see, I'm going to try to whip this thing out in about an hour to an hour and a half. I mean, you know, depends on how much I jab and, and all that, but it doesn't take too long. I mean, with painting and then you got to do the distressing part, but the candle part itself actually is really quick because we're just going to be taking soy wax uh, pellets and put them in the microwave and then you pour it in here. <laughs> but, you know, I'm doing all these other steps to make the pot look creative. So if you just want to make a straight candle with nothing on it, I mean, you know, you can do that. But I just wanted to add a little extra bump in there to make it look cute as you're doing a candle. OK, so I've got that pretty much cover. You don't have to be a solid cover because we're going to go over this with the other lighter tone and kind of brush it down and make it aged look. Um, I do want to do my rim, though, because it looks to me, it looks a little bit cleaner. And the way I do that is I just kind of brush it like dry brush it out to the side. Some people, sometimes they want to paint their pot on the inside. Um, I mean, yeah, you can do that or at least paint it down halfway. So it looks a little bit cleaner when you've either got your uh, soil, you know, your, um, not your soil, your, your wax or your um, soil. Yeah, your soil, which by the way, the, the, the genius of this, what I think is really cool is the fact that you're using an actual planter pot. Okay, this is a planter pot. And I just realized I put the uh, thing, the penny in the wrong darn one. What an idiot I am, Kim. So I got to get that other one and take that penny out. Um, if I can get a penny. Either that or Robert's going to have to bring me a penny. <laughs> if I can find a penny. I think I can get this one out, though. Because that was one thing about the planter. I think I can poke a hole in this and get that out. These suckers are in there pretty good. Anyway, um, so not only does this double as a, um, there we go. I got it. Heat up my glue gun again. Uh, double as a planter, you know, and of course, hence that's why I was just talking about that because it's got the hole in the bottom. Where do I, where do you buy the wax? I'm going to tell you all that. Be patient, Robert. But thank you for the, thank you for the question. I appreciate it. I actually got this wax off of uh, Amazon and I'll have links to all that if anybody's interested, but you can buy the wax at, um, I believe Walmart's got it now too. And of course, Hobby Lobby. Uh, Michaels, they all carry the wax. All right, I'm going to have to plug my hot glue gun in because I thought I was being clever and had a little tip ahead of time, but um, I've got to, <laughs> let me see, plug this one. Did you bring me a penny? Oh, he's Johnny on the spot. Look at that. I got it out, but that's great. Dave. Oh, I just unplugged my light. I'm going to plug something here, my phone cord. All right. There we go. All right, thank you. Oh, you said it's dark on there? Well, I just unplugged one of my lights. That don't work. <laughs> Hold up. There we go. I got it back on. Technical error, ladies. Okay. Facebook user can't watch now, but I'm sure to watch the replay. Okay, whoever just popped on here, it says Facebook user. I understand that you're saying that you can't watch or watch the replay. That's great. But uh, be aware that I can't see who you are <clears throat> because it says Facebook user because you have to allow uh, StreamYard to have permission to use Facebook. So there's a link for that. And I did put that in my post, but um, I can help you out with that. If you identify with me later on who you are. All right. All right. Now that we've got the penny issue worked out, I'll continue what I'm going to say. So, like I said, the beauty of this is not only is it a, um, <clears throat> a candle, but once it burns down, you can actually use it as a planter. Hello, you can just, you know, the wax. This is one, this is one I made a long time ago and it's really not the prettiest thing ever, but um, <clears throat> but you can see I have been burning it and the candle has been burning and I've been having it in my bedroom and it's scented and still smells good. Uh, but my, my plan is once all the wax is done is I'm going to actually, uh, it'll have a hole in there and it's got a penny at the bottom, but you can take the penny out. And what the penny does is it keeps the wax from coming through on the bottom, as I'm going to show you that. Um, but, yeah, you can turn this into a planter. And that's actually one of the other reasons why I chose to do this, even though we're doing a lot of Christmas themed things like we're getting ready for the holidays. I chose something that was a little bit more neutral that because think about this, your candle is going to take a while to burn down. And by the time it burns down, it might be spring <laughs> and you can use it as a planter. So you can use it in when it's cooler or whenever and then turn it into a planter when 
when it's a uh, nice weather out and Florida is always pretty warm. So we don't have to worry about that too much. Okay. So this guy is pretty much dry and it's way, 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 way dark. I mean, you can see it's real black and Robert said my screen's a little bit dark here. Double. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Steph. I am all about like function and art. I mean, I love just doing decorative stuff, but I like it if I can actually have the things I make and create, have a function, like be functional. So, um, Sometimes I do things like that, you know, anyway, so I've got that out of the way. What do I got to do now? Oh, yeah. Okay. My next step is I have to paint over this. And like I said, I've never done these two combinations, but I'm thinking it's going to be all right. Um, I'm using this kind of, like I said, this is real sticky for some darn reason. I don't figure out what it is. I think it was because where the label was. You can tell I've had these guys a while. This is the, your old diehard Waverly um, chalk paint and so what I'm gonna do with this now this is where the distress part comes in I need my plate over here is that um, um, it's better to use a sponge when you're doing the distress part because it gives you a real soft effect than a brush you can do a brush if you do a real dry brush but I found on this real rough surface because it's so porous and it's round that it actually works better to use a little dauber or if you have a um, a sponge, like a little cosmetic sponge or some sort of little dense sponge to use, it works pretty good with that. But the dauber works great because it's got a handle on it and it's not as messy. All right, so here's what I'm doing. I'm basically taking a little bit of this and I'm daubing it off. It's sort of like when you're going to do a stencil. And of course, you can add it. Now, the best way I found is I'm going to start from here and because I'm giving that a little bit more extra time to dry. That's where my little relief pattern is, is I did like kind of like a little swirly motion on it. And you do have to play with it a little bit to kind of get the effect you want. So sometimes it might require another coat or not. It just depends on the effect you like. But put my hand in there, get my fingers in there. You can see I'm just kind of daubing over that. And kind of doing a smear effect and it's pretty dry i don't have that much paint on it at all like i said we're going for a and you can kind of daub it too and get inside those little crevices where your relief is but it's kind of cool to leave a bit of that brown in there too so that way it kind of gives it a shading shadow effect okay but you can either like do a little pounce or a little rub on it and and basically you can see i'm kind of like rubbing out all of the paint and it's kind of nice because it, when it rubs, it smears and it kind of drags it and puts it in different directions. And, you know, you don't want it to be all one solid color. That's the whole beauty of distressing is it it's got that whole aged kind of variation look to it. It says, Robert says, will paint fall after time if you decide to use it on as a flower pot? Um, actually, Robert, your question is really good. Well, you know, paint is paint. And if you have it outside, um, in the sun, especially, it's going to wear at some point and it'll fade. But for the most part, you know, especially if you get them inside, it's painted up pretty good. If a person wanted to with these, you can actually put a, a seal coat, like a clear seal coat on top of it. Um, and that will protect it a little bit more. And they actually do make matte seal coats. So if you want to keep that little distressed age look, you could do that. Keep it... Um, Keep it in that vein. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm trying. I've actually got my light down on here, um, but maybe it's my camera that's making it look dark because it does look a little bit darker on my screen too. But maybe on a bigger surface, it might not look too bad because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm looking in a little side view on my uh, stream yard here, so it looks a little bit funky. So yeah, you see the effect I'm getting here. I want it to be kind of like worn out. You can even leave a little bit of the brown showing if you want to, whatever how you like it how distressed you want it then even more so if you want to take a um, where's my towel I got a little rag here you can take a little rag and you can wipe down your edges generally things start wearing around your edges Let me, I'm getting out of the camera Let me get over here so you guys can see what I'm doing okay I'm just kind of wiping the edges down a little bit and bringing up some of that underneath and this stuff is drying like crazy this is actually probably too dry. If you want to do it, really want to do it, though, you can just dip this in water, you know, water base, and then it'll take it right off. It'll bring it right up. See, I put a little, I don't know if you can see that, but I, I just put a little bit of water on my rag and did it, and it kind of aged it down. I mean, it, it'll uh, take the, the chalk paint off. 
and just kind of go around your rim a little bit here and there to kind of bring that some of that dark color back underneath. It is kind of a cool color combo. I wasn't sure. I mean, like I said, I, I like this yellow, but I'd never tried it like this before. And it's kind of cool. And even the butterfly, I wasn't sure about that butterfly stencil, but it's showing up pretty good. It's kind of neat. So now you know. You can use the brown umber with this, um, I don't remember what the name of this color is called. It's kind of a mustard yellow. But you could, like I said, you could take a mustard yellow acrylic paint and do the same thing as long as you just do a, like a little dry brush on it. It doesn't have to be chalk paint. I just happened to decide I want to use my chalk paint. And I think I'm going to kind of leave that a little bit or see, I'm going to take a little bit off here, off of the guy, my little butterfly. And you know what? I think I'm going to put that back on. I kind of like it a little bit. It's kind of pop it till you like it, so to speak. I don't know. What do you ladies think? I don't know if it's hard to see in the camera, but I kind of like it this way. I think it looks pretty cool. That butterfly sort of looks like angel wings to me, doesn't it? I kind of like it. It looks kind of neat. So, okay. So we're good. See? Okay. You've got a relief and you've got a distress look on a terracotta pot. All right. So that's two steps. All right, let me put that, make sure that you, you keep these in water if you don't, if you want to use them again, they don't dry up. So we're done with all the painting. That's pretty cool. And now, oh, put my lid on here because I can be a messy, messy girl sometimes and spill things because I get a little klutzy. All right, so now I think I um, killed a little time that my heat gun is, is warmed up again and I can put the penny inside. Looks great. Love this. Thank you, Steffi. Thank you so much. All right. So let me see if I got my heat gun. Yeah, I can tell because my heat gun's going. All right. So here we go. Once again. Oh, Robert brought me two pennies. Isn't he a sweetheart? But I, I managed to pull this one out of the other one. Okay. So I've got a penny. You need the penny. Very important. And I'll tell you this from trial and error. I tried doing this different ways. I tried putting a piece of tape in there. I tried uh, putting something else in the bottom of it too, and it didn't work. The penny really works like a gem, and um, it really is the best way to do it. And you, you know, it's, some, it's a scent. So, basically, what I'm doing, careful not to burn your fingers, is I'm putting a little bit of hot glue on the penny, and then I'm just going to put it down on top of that hole. You need a little dab. You don't need much. Even if you don't get it seated down in there, you can kind of. Move it around till you get it. You got a little bit of window before that hot glue dries. Okay. And then you can see I've got my penny down there in the center. Okay. Very important. Otherwise, your, your, your wax is going to leak all over. Believe me, like I said on the first one, I'll show you the bottom of this one. This one, look at that. I didn't have a penny in there. And the wax like <laughs> leaked all over. So I had to like work it till it filled up. But so I'm giving you a, the, the real good version of how to do this and not having to take up all the, trial and error away from you. Okay, so we've got our penny in. We've got our, our distressed pot. Now, what do we got to do? We need wax, right? We need candle wax. So how do we do that? Well, the simplest way and easiest way is to microwave your wax. You can have a double burner and you want to melt it in a double double burner, double boiler. You can do that. Um, I used to work at a craft store, like a DIY craft store, and they had wax candles. And they had a big, huge crock pot. And we kept it in there. So if you're doing a lot of candle making, that would really be the way to go. You can melt your wax in a crock pot, but it actually had like a little spigot on the back. You could just pour it right out. And it was very clever. I think it was kind of made for that, for candle making. But we would just pour, keep pouring wax in there and just heat it up every morning. So um, anyway, but the home version, easy way, is to get your uh, candle wax pellets. Okay. Now, I'm using soy simply because I like soy. Um, I do have some beeswax in a chunk. But these are just easy to work with. By the way, they're super, super sticky. Um, I don't know if you've ever used these before, but they stick together a lot. So make sure you keep it in a, I ended up getting a five pound uh, box of it, a bag of it, because I couldn't find anything that was cost effective in a smaller container. So once again, I want to say that if anybody's actually interested in doing a couple of candles and they don't have the materials and they would like for me to put a kit together for them, I have an exuberant amount of wax 
and I have extra pots and things like that and the plaster so I could throw you a kit together and get that out to you so you can private message me on that one and I'll work with you on getting a kit together for you um, if you want to do more than one then go ahead and, and you can buy you can actually buy this uh, these pellets in a smaller quantity I believe I bought my last batch at Hobby Lobby so anyway <clears throat> okay so anyway I do have this already measured out for the amount that I need and for this size pot, which is just like a three and a half inch pot, by the way, I didn't tell you if anybody's, a, uh, you know, you can find these little terracotta pots in your um, your garden centers at your, um, you know, like Walmart or wherever, you know, the garden centers, they have these pots. But I found the uh, two for a buck, 50 cents a piece at um, Dollar Tree in the, in the springtime. They carry these and I just have a whole crap load of them. I bought a bunch of them. Oh, you got a double boiler. All right, stuff. It's in retirement, sealed out of the well. Now you can pull it out if you want to start the candle making business now or make a bunch of gifts for people for Christmas. I mean, who doesn't love a candle? You know, candles are easy and it's going to be homemade. And like I said, you'll be able to use this one. Because what do most people do with their containers when they're done with candles, the glass containers? I actually have. Uh, taken some of mine and here's a little tip if you need to take the wax out you know you can put them in the freezer and you can freeze the candle wax and it'll come out you still have to kind of do a little cleaning but that's the best way to get most of your wax out of your container I've taken those out and uh, reused the glass and made them into glasses or use them for other things and most people actually just toss them after they're done but this is a way to use it you know and be a little thrifty anyway back to the whole now look at this I'm gonna tell you Look how we've just been sitting here for a few minutes. This, th this thing's already dry. I could technically use this. It dries up super fast. But since I've already got this one painted, we're going to go ahead and go with our butterfly angel wings. Okay. So, once again, <clears throat> get you one of these little um, guys from the Dollar Tree. It's a buck. Of course, it's a dollar because it's a Dollar Tree. Get you a, a nice one, a um, four cupper of these. Uh, what the heck is this called? A measuring cup. <laughs> a measuring cup. Yeah, get you a measuring cup. And, um, of course, optional as well. If you want it to be scented, you can do scents. I love scented candles. That's my thing. It's like, why burn a candle if it's not going to have scent in it? So um, what I did is you can do two ways. This is the um, scented. Actually, that's the wick one. Where's the one for the scented? I got these, I think, once again, Hobby Lobby quite a ways ago. It comes in like a pack of different ones. These are little scents that you can throw in there. or if you're already at the Dollar Tree, you can go ahead and grab some of these little guys, a little oil burner scents, and you can use those too. You're going to have to go and make a separate trip. So this is a vanilla one. This is I'm going to go ahead and use up this one simply because I want to get rid of the bottle, and I know it smells pretty good. Now, as far as how much to add, I think generally the instructions say, like on a, a something this size, to add maybe like um, – uh, maybe I would add like a quarter. I like it really scented. So technically I would add like almost the entire darn bottle or at least half of it. So in this one, I'm going to go ahead and use up what I've got here, which is about a quarter. So it probably won't be as scented as more. But if you want it really, really strong, dump the whole darn thing in there. It's not going to hurt anything. <laughs> okay. So here we go. I've got my, um, <clears throat> my soy beads measured out and I've got these measured at about uh, a cup and a half. For this size container, that's what you're going to need because once it's melted, it's going to settle down and it's going to be uh, liquefied, of course. So it's not going to be as um, as um, bulky. All right. So what we're going to do now is I literally have my microwave doo -doo -doo -doo, sitting there. Where's it at? There's my microwave sitting here next to me. I brought it in from my kitchen. I made Robert bring out here to my to my shop. Okay, I got the microwave. And I'm going to put this in here for now. I experimented with this. Um, it's supposed to say it says you're supposed to heat this to 160 degrees. I'm not even using a, a thermometer with this. If you want to be accurate, you can use a thermometer. Um, but I basically found that this thing will melt in about two and a half minutes, depending on your microwave. You don't want to overdo it because it'll get crazy hot. Um, but these melt pretty fast. <coughs> Excuse me. My throat's a little dry. And uh uh, but I found in my my microwave, it's about two and a half minutes. You can try two minutes and see if that works. And then as long as it's all liquefied, you're good to go. 
Don't put it any any more than two to two and a half minutes. I think it should be fine. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this in my microwave now for about two. I'm going to try two minutes first and see. So I can always do another 30 minutes. Okay. So we got two minutes. What should we do for two minutes? Well, we can actually do artifacts. Does anybody else want to pipe in and tell me anything about candles or have a candle story they want to talk about until our wax melts? Oh, oh you know what? Hello. We don't have that much time, duck him, because we got to get our wick ready. All right. So while we're doing that, or even before you put your candle wax in, it doesn't matter because even after you pull your candle wax out, it stays solidified for quite a while. You don't have to worry about rushing and pouring it in your pot there because it's going to stay liquefied for quite a bit. That's one thing about soy wax; it takes quite a bit to quite a while to dry up. Literally, like overnight, it's going to be where it's nice and solid enough to work with but okay so we do need to get over ahead and get our wick in here now uh old school way most people you know i've got like a skewer or you could take a um a pen or a pencil or something like that and you would tie it and get over here so you guys can see you would tie this around da, 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 put a little you know tie it on and then just leave it in there okay and let it sit um candles they do have those little um it's called a particular name. I don't remember what they're called. It's like that little silver base thing that you hook it onto, and it makes it stay nice and straight. Now, if you want to use one of those and put it in there, but I literally found that if I get it nice and straight when I'm when I uh, set it in here, that it stays pretty straight. It'll move a little bit once you pour it in there, but it stays pretty straight. So I'm not even going to use one of those little um, those little silver things that are uh, the little bases, I guess, to hold the wick in. However. I, I actually found, I went online and looked on YouTube because I found an easier way to hold your candle wick because I'm like, I don't like to waste all the extra wick because you got to cut off all that wick. Uh, what are your, what are, oh, what are, what are, I didn't tell you what candle makers were called. I'm sorry. <laughs> I forgot about that one. They were called chandeliers. Chandeliers. Because before people had electricity, what did they do? They put candles um up on their ceilings like little candle chandeliers so um at first when i read it i could have swore it said chandler i'm thinking okay was the last name bean you know like from friends i was laughing but no it's called it, they were called chandeliers and i don't know what they call them now maybe they're still called that but okay so what i'm doing i'm getting back to the wick part let me see if my two minutes because my two minutes is up let me see if that two minutes was good enough yeah actually it was two minutes was totally fine on that okay look Look, ladies, da, da, da. we have a liquefied wax just like that. That was only two minutes. And that's great because um, the less you have to do it, the, the less you have to heat up the wax, the better. So I can literally sit this off to the side for a bit because it takes quite a while for that to before it turns into a solid form again. But back to this this little wick trick, which I oh, that's cool. That rhymes wick trick. All right. So um, I took a big another craft stick. And literally drill the hole in it. If you got a hole punch or something, you might be able to just dab a little hole in there, an awl maybe. But uh, to, I drilled a hole in it towards the center, and you can just cut your wick out to size. I didn't really measure my wick at this point, but I got to cut it out to size. Let me do that, and I can put that back in there. So basically, I'm just turning it upside down, measuring it where I'm going to want it. Because the thing about the beauty of this is it saves all that extra wick that you won't be wasting because you're just going to be having it. It'll still be a little bit you got to cut off because you don't want to wick too long. Oh, I need to tell you a little bit about wicks too. All right, so I think I'm going to cut it about right there. But you can cut it. You want to cut it so it's a little bit kind of like above your, a um, little bit above your rim. And like I said, you can always cut it down a little bit if you need to. All right, so I've got my wick cut. By the way, wicks, I want to share something with you. Okay, see the size of this wick? This is another uh, trial and error on me because I just started winging it sometimes without really knowing what I was doing. <clears throat> when I first made these, <clears throat> excuse me, I um, was using this little thin wick and I thought, oh, that's going to be thick enough. I mean, that'll be big enough for this little small surface. Well, what happened is when you, if you ever had a candle that you get that tunnels, in other words, it creates like a, <clears throat> a hole in the center of it and it doesn't burn all the way out. Well, that's actually called tunneling, and um, the reason that is is because your wick's too small. So these are like for taper candles, the real skinny ones, you know, that did like the little long skinny ones. These are more for a taper. When you're doing something that's got a, a like a wide base to it, 
you need a thicker wick like that. So FYI, if you're going to do anything like this, you need to have a thicker wick. I don't even know what size these are, but just don't get the little skinny wick wax um, because it, it won't do you any good. So, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and put this through my little hole again and sit that inside. Uh, by the way, another thing, too, that I learned, one of my artifacts about candles is that if you do have a candle that gets that um, tunneling effect, <clears throat> there's a way you can fix that. And I've never tried it. I just found that out today when I was doing my research. I was able to grab it before, but this time I'm having to use my the end of my skewer to kind of poke that through. You know, find something sharp and poke that wick through there. Okay. All right. This is such a clever idea. So loving this. <gasps> so, and it goes nice and straight. You don't have to worry about that bend and turn in the... Uh, and what I did is I just got it placed down in there right on top of the penny area, you know, just like barely touching the penny. I really don't want it to touch, like, you know, because you don't want it to buckle. You want it to sit real straight. So you just kind of line it up as even as possible over there. And try to, and remember, you're looking at the top too. So you want it to be even at the top and centered in your, in, on your um, container. All right. So. You can kind of see that. Isn't that cool? Now, I will cut a little bit more of that wick off still because I do need to, uh, you know, it's going to be way too long. That's another thing, too, about wick. Oh, tunneling. I'll finish the tunneling thing. I'll tell you about the wick. When, um, if you have a candle that smokes, that means your wick's too big. So you just want to trim a little bit of that off. It, you know, you want to obviously blow it out and let it cool and then trim up just a little wee off. And then uh, they're going to smoke right in the very beginning when you start them. But if they continue to smoke when you're uh, working with them, I mean, when they're burning, then uh, you definitely want to um, cut the wick down just a smidge. Okay, so back to the tunneling effect. If you're having one that's tunneling, by the way, I wanted to share this with you. I didn't show this before. See this one that I've got burning? You can see that it started. I've, uh, I've let it be burnt. I've let it be burned. It's been burning for about an hour now. And another quick tip about this to prevent tunneling and prevent candles, the best way to start a candle is they say, does anybody know how that? Does anybody know how to actually burn a candle in the beginning? Maybe I'll leave that as a question. If anybody knows, they can answer. If you don't know, then I'll tell you. But you can see that I also tried to experiment. I took some little botanicals from my yard and put them in here. And, um, you know, that's an okay effect. But I don't know. I wouldn't mess with that if I were you. I'd just leave it plain. They're kind of pretty in the beginning. But, you know, it's not that a big of a deal. Okay. So, all right. We are going to go ahead and pour our wax. Okay. <clears throat> We've got everything set. I want to make sure that's nice. And you can still play around with it once you pour your wax in. Just be very careful, even though it's been sitting a while. But you can see, I mean, this thing is still solidified. See? Still pretty solid. I got a little bit of jerky going on in my camera there. I can see. I don't know how it is on your end. Am I still doing good with my audio, my visual, everything looking good? <clears throat> I don't know what's in my throat lately. I'm super dry. All right. <clears throat> what's the right way? Oh, the right way. The right way to actually start a candle, Mary, is to let it start it and let it burn for a couple of hours. Don't just start it and then blow it out. Actually, you're not supposed to blow them either. That's another tip. Um, you're not supposed to uh, put it out at least for a couple of hours because what it does, it gives it an opportunity to burn um, consistently and solid. So um, if this one is done correctly, then the whole, uh, if a candle is done correctly, your entire candle surface will be melted on the top. And of course, it'll solidify when it dries. But that's what you're supposed to do. You're not supposed to just start a candle and then put it out. You're supposed to let it burn for a few hours before you blow it out again or blow. And like I said, another tip, already fact, you're not supposed to actually blow uh, a candle. I mean, a lot of people do, you know, but they said, of course, you can blow wax everywhere or whatever. And if it's in a container, it's not so bad. But I try to take um, most of the candles I buy that are from the store. They have lids, you know, put a lid on this one. You can actually take you know, like a piece of uh, aluminum foil or some sort of metal or whatever and just pop, you know, and let it kind of basically you're snuffing it out. No, you're not. Well, yeah, you're killing it. I guess it's called snuffing, but um, you're suffocating it. 
you know, that's another way to kill somebody, but <laughs> we're trying to be upbeat, right? Anyway, yes, yeah, so you was basically want to kill the flame. So I got to thinking I could have come up with a lot of flame and fire puns like we did when our we did our funky chicken live group. That was that was a blast. But okay, so anyway, tidbit. Burn your candle a couple hours when you first start it. Don't blow it out. Snuff it out. Okay. Those are two tips right there. Um, oh, another thing. I keep doing this because I've got other things I want to tell you about candles before. Because once we pour the wax, we're pretty much done. It just sits there and you let it set up and you're good to go. Um, another thing about candles. Let's see. Um, if you wanted to add the little trim around here, that's just a little piece of twine. Where's my twine? You know, everybody knows what twine is. You can get a little bit of this and wrap it around, <clears throat> of course. Now, if you, and I would tie it in a little bit of a bow. I got too many things in front of me. Let me move this over, Kim. <clears throat> I would even tie this in a bow on this one because it's so small. And, you you know, I've got it placed out. I didn't want to hide my little uh, birdie. But you could tie this in just a little knot. And then I frayed my edges. But the best thing to do is I didn't do it with this one yet. To make that stay on better is to take a little, once you get it tied on there, just bump, bump, bump with a little bit of hot glue and, and secure it with your hot glue gun. Okay. Just to like in two little spots or two, three little spots so it doesn't slide down. Okay. That's another little tip for, for doing that. Okay. So I guess we'll go ahead and pour this in. By the way, um, Anybody know when candles basically became into existence or the history of a candle, <coughs> how long they've been around? <clears throat> Excuse me again. Sorry about that. Okay. Well, candles have been around since about 500 BC by the Romans. The Romans used to use animal fat for candles. Interestingly enough, too, I've learned that there are several animal things that have been used as candles. Of course, we're using soy here, but beeswax is one of the most common things. And that's another tidbit I found, too. I'm kind of diverting. But that you know that back in during the um, famine days that they used to eat the candles because they were food-based. I mean, they were animal fat, uh, tallow, or um, beeswax. So if they were super hungry, people would steal their body's candles and eat them. Oof. Okay. I guess it's better than dirt. Um, so, yeah, isn't that great? I, I like learning a little bit about it, too. So I could find the Romans and find animal fat. But check this out, too. There is a fish called, what's the dang fish called? Uh, I have to, I, I got to hear my little cheat sheet notes here. Yep. Da, 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 da. Where's the name of that fish? Here it's called. It's called the candlefish. Uh, you Eulachion. E U L A C H O N. Eulachion. Eulachion. It's a high fat. The fish is so high in fat, you literally burn the whole fish as a candle. I'm like, I don't know if you just stick a wig in there and start going for it or just burn it. I, you know, I don't know that far, but I thought that was kind of interesting. Other animal things that have been used for animals that have been used for candles are um, whales. Of course, we know whales. They have a very high fat content. Cows, uh, insects, and yeah, that's pretty much it, I guess. Yeah, the cows and insects and whales besides this candlefish. <laughs> and oh, let's see. The Greeks also used the candles. Uh, when did it come in existence for birthdays? That's what I was going to say. Anybody know when uh, people started using candles for birthdays? I'm going to go ahead and pour this while we're while I'm talking. And all I'm doing is lick, just pouring it right in the center. So candles were used for birthdays around the 1700s. The Romans, of course, like I said, they started the whole candle idea. And um, they um, were using it for some of their pagan rituals. Um, they would use it for Artemis. I guess Artemis was the harvest moon and hunting god. And they would use the candles during the full moons to... Uh, present to for their rituals or whatever so that's what they did all right so yeah you can see I've poured my wax here's a trick 
Okay, try not to disturb your candle. Um, if you want to take like either a skewer or a toothpick, you can kind of, because you can't really see it. I don't know if I can get my camera close enough. I'm not going to do it because um, move the candle. I'm going to let this sit here and dry. But it's okay to really disturb it. But my aesthetic eye, if you disturb this thing, what's going to happen is you're going to have a little bit of a wax ring. The wax is going to come up on the side of your terracotta pot, and it's going to leave like a wax ring look which is really not a huge deal because to tell you the truth, these did that. And I took a little bit of the pellets and just kind of rubbed it around my finger to look, make it look a little cleaner because it was a def defined line. I thought it was kind of ugly. So, and then it will settle a little bit. So you're going to have a little bit of that wax ring. So that's another tip too. Take a couple of those little pellets or a little bit of your wax on your finger. Just kind of go inside your area and just wax it down so it looks a little bit more consistent. You know, it doesn't have like a little sharp ring on there but okay so i can see though that my my um there we go as you're kind of playing with and you know as it sits in there <clears throat> though that wick did, did move it shifted a little bit in there and it's a little bit curvy but <clears throat> don't stress about that it's still you know as long as it's kind of sitting right over there um over your penny and make sure that you that you've got this wick centered in the center too of your candle because you want it to be able to be in the center so it burns consistently. Ta -ta -da. Okay, that looking pretty good. And you know, you can go back periodically and check it and play with it if you want. Your turn. Do you know what what to add extra to get stronger scent if you're trying to get a strong hot throw? A stronger hot throw? You mean like hot throw as in like a stronger smell? Is that what you're talking about? A hot throw? I don't know what a hot throw is. <clears throat> no, is that you're asking me a question? Okay, I don't know the answer to that. Love the truth. If there, if you actually have an answer to that stuff, tell me because all I know is just to add more scent in it. Unless you've got some uh, a magic trick for that, you can teach me something because I am not the end all be all. Oh yes. Okay, tell me. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. Tell us. Tell us. Tell us. What is it? Hot throw is when the candle is burning. Oh, vanilla. Okay, so you're saying actually add vanilla into it, like just vanilla, vanilla extract, literally vanilla extract, or real vanilla, like a the, the vanilla bean, or uh, some of this vanilla like oil stuff. What what kind of cold throws when the candle isn't lit? Oh, well, thank you. Okay, I didn't know those two facts. Okay, obviously, you've made some candles before, girlfriend. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so what type of vanilla do we put in there? Like vanilla extract like you would cook with or vanilla oily stuff like essential oils or whatever. Oh, I forgot to add my oil. Hello, Kim. No, vanilla oil. Hello, I'm sitting there jabbing too much. Uh, the oil can go in now, but technically I should have put it in when I in here you know okay so i'm just going to go ahead and pull this in here and it's it's not going to be as mixed i realize that now but i'll try to mix it up a little bit okay well if you've seen candles before you should be teaching this darn class then girlfriend all right so i'm just kind of stirring this around a little bit obviously i'm disturbing my wick because blonde dodo me started talking too much wasn't paying attention to my my steps okay so i finished off this bottle but i just put this is a one ouncer and honestly if i had a half of it i would do the whole half because i like them i have so vanilla oil you're saying okay cool so now we know add extra vanilla oil to give it some extra bump bump smell all right so there even though i kind of goofed and didn't put it in half in here to mix it up i still just threw it in my in my pot my melting pot <laughs> so to speak and it seems to be doing okay. See how it goes. <gasps> All right. So there you have it. You have a cool terracotta pot distress candle. All right. And um, if anybody has any questions on that or they're watching on the replay, anything they need, just let me know. But that's about it. And uh, I'll be back, I think, next week, next Friday, I'll be doing something too. And we'll work on um, 
what that's going to be because I honestly don't know what I'm going to do yet, but I'll come up with something really cool. All right. Ladies, thank you for hanging out there with me and sticking with this. And I hope you learned a few things and share the love. And if you would really appreciate it, once again, I am crafting with Kim. I would appreciate it if you go on my YouTube page because I'm really trying to get my YouTube page built up. Subscribe and hit the notification button because every time I go live on these, I go live on there. And you can actually know where to find me on, on YouTube and also Facebook. So appreciate it. Love you guys. Have a good night. Have a good weekend. God bless.